If you just found the equivalent of $98,100 in cash in the woods, what would you do? The fact that it is an amount that specific makes me wonder if you actually did find $98,100 in the woods. What you're describing is like the missing component of all those out-of-touch boomer brain MSNBC financial literacy articles that assume your grocery bill is like $30 a week or whatever. The secret is, use a stupid budget that only a rich person with media influence could imagine, how much is a banana Michael, $10, and then supplement that insane budget with your bag of cash from the woods money. So the fact that I buy $15 in Chipotle grill food every other day in cash, is finally going to pay off for me. Why put any of your TV purchase on the card? It's not like the IRS will walk into your home, see a big TV, and then choose to audit you because of it. Yep if it ain't boring you will get caught. Heck I screwed up a little during the home loan process I deposited a $100 bill into my checking from my birthday and the loan officer wanted to know where that money came from. This was my first thought. But then in these scary times, I realized some local humanitarian efforts might need $98,100 in anonymous cash. Or $95,000 while a new gaming system manifests in my bedroom from thin air. air. Bro IRS ain't gonna notice your cash bought groceries or gas. This is the gist of my intended response. It's almost exclusively for small concession purchases. Maybe go one town over and buy some appliances. But unfortunately that money has no real hope of getting back into the system without red flags. So I'd just enjoy 5 to 10 years of cheaper groceries, gas, haircuts etc maybe go to Mexico and get one of my cars painted but otherwise just keep the money in a box under my bed. This guy washes money. If it weren't for using my dead mother's home phone number at the grocery store the IRS would assume I ate every meal at work and pay for insurance on a car I don't put any gas into. People in the service industry pay for everything in cash. Then they take what's left to the bank every one to four weeks. There was a counterfeiter in NYC that for like 10 years produced small amounts of fake bills. Just enough to scrape by after their wife passed. HTTPS colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash emmerich underscore jutit net or number sign counterfeiting underscore scheme. Not cash, the equivalent of cash. This would be sick for me, an easy AF. I bartend and make cash every shift. Sometimes more, sometimes less. This is it though. I use my cash for groceries, gas, and kids allowance. Or Ulta or Sephora purchases. You got reposted on r slash suspiciously specific. HTTPS colon slash slash www.reddit.com slash r slash suspiciously specific slash comments slash 11wvn56 slash 98100 and underscore 50 underscore cents. I would walk away and forget that I saw it. Haven't you seen No Country for Old Men? The thing everyone misses in these scenarios is that the IRS can audit back to five years. So you're either voluntarily paying taxes on it, or you're hoping you don't get audited to where they'll see a big purchase you can't explain how you got the funding for. So what you do is filter the money into everyday purchases. Every time you fill up your tank, you pay $20 in cash. When you buy groceries, you just pay 20% in cash. Big new TV? $100 in cash, the rest in the card. Something like a handyman doing a home repair you could do all in cash though. This way spending habits never change, or you aren't suspiciously just never buying groceries or gasoline. Sure, it's slow, but it's the only way you will actually get all $98,100 of value without running the risk of an audit. Edit, to everyone commenting about wash it in a casino or similar methods, that's not the point. Washing money is to hide its origin, because it originated from illegal activities. Finding money in the woods isn't illegal. 
and to people who have commented and DM'd me about not paying taxes and contributing to society, this is a hypothetical post on an imaginary situation strangers on the internet are discussing for fun. Lighten. Up. Up. Since when does the IRS track spending habits during a standard audit? I'm curious as you could pay cash for everything for a year and move your normal income you've already been taxed on into any number of places. How would that even raise suspicion to generate an IRS audit? Sure for $5 million but you can easily spend $100,000 over time and it will never be noticed. The IRS isn't going to notice the purchase of a big TV. They might notice if you install a home theater, but not a TV. They're unlikely to notice the purchase of a good used vehicle through private sale but they'll notice the purchase of a new vehicle paid in cash. One big purchase you might be able to shrug off as I've kept X amount of cash under my mattress for years and it suddenly occurred to me how silly it is to risk losing it in a fire when I really needed a new truck but that won't work more than once and you better have the figures worked out before they come knocking. No way in hell the IRS would spend their resources on investigating you spending habits, come to the conclusion that you illegally obtained under $100,000, prove it in court, and then make you pay like $35,000 in taxes. In almost all cases, the IRS can audit returns for three years from the latter of the original due date of the return or the date of filing. If a return is never filed, that year is open for audit indefinitely. A fraudulent return, i.e. an incorrect return not filed in good faith, is also open for audit indefinitely.